What's up, suckers? Tis I, Ariana, in my first ever face-to-face -face video. And here's hoping that it elevates the experience for you. Or ruins it. I don't know. Let's find out together. So, for those of you who have no idea who I am, which is totally completely understandable, I am Ariana Bradford. I have done a lot of things, but in 2021, I found out that I had ADHD. And throughout all of this time with ADHD, I had somehow managed to do a lot of things that I was supposedly not supposed to be able to do. Write a book, post regularly to social media, um, figure out ways for old employers and friends of mine to be more efficient. And I realized that finding out about my diagnosis had actually just empowered me better to be able to figure out how my brain works and to work around that. The problem was that as I started looking for apps and software, because I am a ridiculous nerd like that, that could help brains like mine, I found that the productivity world is really still <laughs> kind of behind the times and stuck in the attitude of, if you didn't do well, it's because you just don't want it hard enough. It's mind over matter. Mind over matter, I said. Baby gonna cry? Baby gonna cry? And the fact is a lot of us are crying because we have brains that have minds of their own, right? So I got more and more frustrated. Uh, I lied to so many different habit trackers <laughs> that uh, eventually wound up getting deleted from my phone that I decided that enough was enough and it's time for me to start helping people who really just need help with productivity from the standpoint that we don't all have brains that we can just fight with and eventually overcome. And while this is largely about neurodivergence and ADHD, I, like I said, I have ADHD and uh, chronic fatigue syndrome, so a lot of the stuff that I say is coming from that mindset. I also kind of think about it from the mindset of a parent. I am a mother of two. Uh, and a person who just needs a lot of rest, like some of us just need more than others. So most of the stuff that I talk about is going to be more on the neurodivergent friendly side, but there are going to be a lot of times where you're going to hear things that are more universal and that actually just have to appeal to people who kind of need a little bit more relaxed of a schedule. Because, and I'm going to say this a lot and you're going to get really sick of it, Success is not perfection, it is satisfaction. The whole point of productivity is to feel like you're getting shit done. <laughs> it is not to get everything done. Even if you finish everything on your to-do list, but you feel like hot shit at the end of the day, and I don't mean hot shit like a badass, I mean hot shit like diarrhea, you've done it wrong. The whole point is for you to go to bed at night and go, yeah, go to bed at night. The whole point is for you to go to bed at night feeling like you did the best you could. And that's what I'm here for. So before we start getting into what I want to talk about today, I have been advised that since I am new to this whole YouTube channel thing, that I should be telling you that if this video, if this channel, if I seem like someone who can help you and this seems like the kind of thing you want to be a part of, please make sure you like and subscribe. And now that I'm done with that, let's move on. So, today I really wanted to talk about something that is universal and universally needed, no matter who you are, and that's the concept of planning realistically. A lot of us get in our heads about productivity and we tend to tell ourselves that real productivity means that we should be able to plan everything, write everything down, get everything perfectly put together in one go. And that's not the way that it works. Real productivity has to do with figuring out how the things that you have to do fit into your day. And many of us don't want to think about it realistically because we truly do believe that we could be those people who like do yoga in the morning and drink all of the water and still find time to, I don't know, abuse baristas at the local Starbucks. But that's not how most of us work. 
Most of us are going to have energy that is finite and that needs to be mm -hmm. meted out realistically. And there are a few ways to do this. Before I get into how, I do just wanna let you guys know that most of the time what you're gonna catch me doing is giving you two different options. The SaaS option, which stands for software as a service, or as I like to put it, software as a solution, or the manual non-SaaS option, which doesn't have anything to do with software, computers, electronics, or it tends to be pretty low key stuff that you could do on your own. So let's get into the three ways that you can make sure that you plan realistically. <clears throat> Item one. Item one, be mindful of time. And this may sound super simple, super fundamental, but we often forget the fundamentals, especially if we are people who are trying to be like normal people, we tend to kind of forget that there is a fundamental thing here that we need to be taking care of first. And that is the understanding of time. My hair is dripping. I washed it for you. The situation here is that when you need to take time into account, if you're here, the chances are very good that you're not very good at timekeeping or at time prediction. And that's totally and completely normal, especially with ADHD. Um, I believe the term is time myopia, but it could be time blindness. Oh, uh, but the point being your brain just really doesn't see time. It feels it. So you really aren't going to feel a fire lit up under your ass until you feel the deadline coming or you feel a pass or you start feeling like it's been a really long time since you started something. You have a really, really bad understanding of how long things take. And so because of that, sometimes if you plan ahead, whether that be a project or your regular personal to-do list, if you plan ahead and you don't take into account how long things are gonna take or what time is going to be like in a day when you have an event or something set, you are asking for disappointment at the end of the day. And there are a couple ways that you can do this. You can either track time and there are tons of apps out there. The two best that I have found for hourly workers that are free are Harvest and Toggle. Those two will allow you to go ahead and track how long it takes you to do something that is a regular task. That way you have a good idea of how long it takes for you to wash dishes, write a letter, write something for a client, set a project up, whatever. Um, and it makes it so that when you are planning your day, as you time block, you're going to be able to keep track of how long different things take. If you don't want to do that, I highly suggest that you have a timer set, uh, be that like a regular old egg timer or a stopwatch or one of those, well, those are called stopwatches too, aren't they? The things that you run laps with? Yeah, that, I don't know. I don't run laps, so, but you really wanna go ahead and make sure that you have something like that just around to time you. Now, if you don't wanna time yourself, there is a little bit more of a haphazard way that will take longer, but will still give you pretty good results. And that option is to conservatively guess how long things will take. And by conservatively, I mean really conservatively. So if you're gonna write something for a client and you think it's gonna take you 30 minutes, double it. Figure it's gonna take you an hour. If you are gonna go grocery shopping and you're assuming that you're going to get in, get out, get back within 45 minutes, hour and a half is how much time you should put aside for it. And while that's going to take a little bit longer, it is a way that doesn't necessarily expect you to keep up with a habit or a regular routine, which we struggle with sometimes unless you decide that you're going to use muscle memory. So let's talk about this muscle memory thing. 
if you are like, oh my God, I really just want to go ahead and time it, but I know that I'm going to forget to set timers. I know that I'm going to forget to, to put that stopwatch down where I'm at and turn it off. That's cool. That's fine. But one way that you could try to beat it is by muscle memory. And that's by carrying your stopwatch around with you or making it so that before you do one thing, you push that button for toggle or even if you have to remind yourself to do it with a sticky note the first couple of times, eventually your muscles are going to kind of just be used to that routine of moving up, clicking, and moving down. Or setting that stopwatch next to you or whatever, what have you. So that is a very, very good way of trying to remember to do certain things. It doesn't work for everything, but it's how I also stay hydrated because I keep a water bottle at my sides at all times. I have always been this way. I've lost a lot of water bottles this way, but I am now at the point where if my hands are idle, if I am not doing anything, I immediately reach for my water bottle and I get thirsty. It also doesn't help that my ADHD medication makes my mouth dry as fuck, but whatever will work. Item two, be mindful of your energy. Now, you could be one of those people who has an unholy amount of energy like my husband. He's the kind of person, he could go to bed at 4 a.m., wake up at 8 a.m., and still want to harass me who slept a full 12 hours about when we're gonna go out and get errands done on a Saturday morning. I love him. But the fact is, if you're not that kind of person, even if you are that kind of person, you have to realize that you run on a battery. And that battery goes down every time you use some of its energy. Maybe it goes down less than others, but it's always going to continue to produce. And you have to keep that in mind when you plan. Now, if you're like me, who has, is chronically fatigued or who just you're someone who gets tired really, really easily. You need to plan according to your old Tradian rhythm. What is that, Ariana? I'm glad you asked, because I actually read up on it just for you. An old Tradian rhythm, unlike the circadian rhythm, has to do with how your energy ebbs and flows throughout the day. You have to keep track of how that works, especially if you are someone who has very low energy or fatigue quite often. You need to be able to know when your peak is to get shit done and when you are going to drop in order to make sure that you don't schedule anything at that time or that if you do schedule something or you know if you work in a place where you have no choice about the schedule that you are at least very 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 kind to yourself yeah. make sure that you are taking into account how often you are crashing what makes you crash and the times that you regularly crash for example, I generally tend to crash at about two o'clock my time is when my brain gets tired, I feel very weak, and I generally need to lie down for an hour or two. So I make sure that if I'm gonna do stuff like this, I don't do it at 2.30 in the afternoon because instead of getting me like this, you're gonna get me like this. And that's not helpful to anyone. When we do this whole ultradian rhythm thing, we have been fed the belief that if we can't fight our energy levels to do more, whatever that means, that we are weak or that we aren't trying hard enough. And that's not the case. When your body gets tired, it is trying to tell you to relax. It is trying to tell you to sit the fuck down. So listen to it. Keep track of it and make sure you plan accordingly. Now, there are a couple ways that you can do this. The easiest is through apps or some sort of journal. The greatest apps out there for that is one called Paste. The only problem that I have with Paste is that their Google Calendar integration is very, very clunky right now. 
Um, so it can be kind of a pain in the ass to control, but you are able to input when you started your day, when you fell asleep, and then you're able to watch it kind of calculate as time goes when you're going to be at your peak, when you're going to start getting exhausted, and it's usually not too far off, even if you generally have a little bit less energy than it guesses. There are also apps out there for CFS. Um, one of them is uh, Fatigue Assistant, which is a very good one that syncs with Apple Watch and keeps track of how much energy you've been using. It is much more simplified and it's not going to do exactly what you would like, but it will go ahead and help you keep track of the things that you do and how your energy kind of ebbs and flows throughout the day. There is also a great app called Bearable. It is constantly being updated and bettered and hopefully there will be a little bit more of an energy fatigue friendly way to log things soon. But in the meantime, it does have some of the best insights and input that I've ever seen. Again, this is going to mean that you're going to have to put things into it daily but I have found that if you pick a particular time to do it, it's easier. Whether you do it first thing in the morning, before you go to bed, or during lunch, you're more likely to actually remember to do it as a routine and then eventually it becomes part of your life. And it'll be very, very important because then you will know when you crash, when you tend to lose focus, how often you tend to lose focus, and you can plan accordingly so that you will be more likely to get the shit done that you want to get done during the day. So on to the third and final item. And this is so important and kind of more of a mental thing than anything else. But when you are planning, please remember that shit can happen and that you will have no control over it no matter how great you are at planning. I always use myself as an example. I am a really good planner, just saying. I am very good at smoothing out processes and bettering people's days and workflows and I'm really good at efficiency, but I got sick for six to eight weeks straight and then was left with a chronic illness that leaves me tired, uh, if I'm lucky, by 2.30 every day. No amount of planning back in November or December could have readied me for this, none. And if I am sitting here trying to pretend that shit didn't happen or trying to blame myself for the fact that shit happened and I didn't fix it or that I didn't plan for it, all I'm going to do is get into this horrible cycle of pushing myself too far and then failing and pushing myself too far and then failing. And that's not what you want to do. So when you are planning for things, Try your best to plan for shit to happen, but understand that sometimes you are not going to be able to guess what that something could be. But when we're talking about day-to-day -day planning, when we're talking about day-to-day -day productivity, allow buffers, which is a huge, huge thing. When you're planning something that is from 12 to one, don't automatically plan the next thing to start from one to two, unless it is something that is overall flexible and you are controlling the deadline. Otherwise, if you are in control of your day and how it's going to be blocked, allow about a 30 minute break in between each thing you do. This is going to be tantamount, tantamount. Paramount. The word is paramount. This is going to be paramount to your productivity levels and to your satisfaction with productivity levels, guys. So make sure that you are planning those buffers. And if it comes to it, don't be afraid to plan for tomorrow. Most productivity apps do not make it so that you can plan for tomorrow, but you have to sometimes. Sometimes shit is going to happen. Sometimes you are going to look down at your schedule and see that a, bu a bunch of things have been added to your day and now you don't have time for that last thing and that needs to be moved to tomorrow. And if you're looking at me like, well, Ariana, what if it can't be moved to tomorrow? 
then that means that it needs to be your priority for the day. One other thing, one other thing that you definitely want to keep in mind, and this kind of mixes items two and three, if you are someone whose energy, focus, day, changes from day to day, I do not suggest planning your week ahead. I really don't. I know that some people say that it's a great idea and that highly productive people do it on Sunday and they just plan their Monday through Friday and then they do it again the next week. And if you've been doing that and that works for you, great. But I know that a lot of people like me struggle with this and they struggle with it for two reasons. For one, looking at everything all at once can sometimes freeze your brain because you'll get overwhelmed and I know for a fact ADHD brains do this, I'm sure other brains do this as well, but the moment that we see too much on a piece of paper, we're like, fuck this, I'm out, and we leave. And then we wind up staring at the same list, and by Saturday we're like, where the hell did the time go? We didn't do anything. And we didn't do anything, and we focused on things that weren't as important because suddenly this huge list looked like too much. The second reason is that for most of us, and I'm, and I'm medicated, like medicated out the wazoo at this point, I still have days where my focus isn't great. I still have days where my energy isn't great. I still have days where I get so easily distracted that I forget to write a to-do list or I forget to time block my day. And so in that particular case, it really wouldn't help me out very much to have planned even the night before. So if you are the kind of person who finds that you are regularly not finishing things in the day or you are regularly not getting to the things that you need to and you notice that your energy or your focus or just your overall feeling of productivity or need for productivity is changing daily, try not planning anything small or any sort of subtask more than 24 hours ahead. If you can, try planning it even the morning of. Now, obviously this doesn't go for big projects with lots and lots of little steps, but if you're talking about, you know, I don't know, you're a blogger and you wanna write all of your blog posts, how about you can say, okay, Monday is gonna be my writing day, I'm gonna write, but you don't plan on what you're gonna write, you don't plan on spending two to three hours writing the night before you wait until monday see how you feel and if you're not up for that then you make a compromise it helps you feel much more in control it helps you listen to your body a lot better which makes it more likely to let you do the things that you need to do and there you have it those are probably the most universal and most fundamental ways that you can make sure that you plan your day realistically Try to keep those things in mind. And if you have any questions, please go ahead and drop a comment. I'm more than happy to answer it. And again, if this helped you, if you would like to continue to see what else I've got going on, go ahead and like and subscribe, tell your friends, and I'll see you next time.